Welcome. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, the response to the last video has been immense, so I really appreciate uh, all the comments. Before you go any further, if you like what we do and you want to see more, please hit subscribe, hit like, share, all that kind of stuff, because that really helps us across the board and encourages us to do more stuff like this. You'll probably see over the corner, over my shoulder, we've got a blue Range Rover Vogel working at the moment. So we are about to configure the uh, Hyper 9, or commission the Hyper 9 motor and get it going. If you've got interest in that, please let us know and we'll do, do a piece on that. Obviously this takes time to do, um, but please let us know. And obviously if you've got any questions, we're here to answer and we're eager to answer any questions uh, that you may have. So pop down in the comments and, and ask away. Anyway, without further ado, let's talk about where we are with the Land Cruiser. Um, so we've actually made some really good inroads into it over the last few weeks. Well, so we've gone through the cardboard ready design. So you'll see this cardboard construction here. Uh, what's, uh, what's happened is Paul, our fabricator, has um, computerised the engine bay, or the motor bay now, and he has translated it into um, some technical diagrams, and uh, we're about to send it off to be cut and bent up um, for the platform, uh, because now we know the heights from the uh, motor and how much room we've got to play with. Um, so before we send it off to be cut up and bent up, um, we've just done a, a cardboard aided design, and um, we've got the levels ready now, and that will also allow us to get the heights right for the battery box. So we're making some great progress, and uh, hopefully soon we'll have um, the boxes and platforms powder coated and ready to go. Are you in the hole yet? No, I'm not in the hole. Hang on, hang on. I can you almost, got to... almost feel the entrance. Hang yep, on. hang on. Yep. Oh, I can feel it coming through the other end. Beautiful, all right. I'm just going to give it one big push. It should just go all the way through. Oh no, I dropped my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> now we're in, just in the process of assembly. This is the probably 60% of the build. And now we're pretty close to assembly. We can start uh, putting together all the components. Uh, building all together and then considering the, the placement of other following components such as the motor controller, DC to DC, charger and all that kind of stuff as well. So you can see straight away we've got uh, the front battery box in fitted and actually populated now which is obviously great news that means we've got essentially pack voltage uh, to play with. You'll see it's pretty high in, in the motor bay but that's deliberate. Obviously this will be used for off-road stuff uh, through river crossings and all this kind of stuff. So th this has to be high out the way. And to be frank, we've got a, a motor with high voltage connections underneath there as well. So we've got to have a bit of clearance anyway. So uh, the good news is it's obviously, it's in sorted, secure, uh, and the rest of the build can, 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 can complete. I've got to say, it's, it's, it's easy for me to stand in front of the, in front of the camera to a certain extent uh, and, and talk about all this good stuff here. The truth is there's a whole lot of team behind me and hiding while the camera's recording, being quiet. They've contributed massively to this and obviously, personally, and Jack and as well, we, we couldn't do this without the support of the team. So I'm blessed to have such an awesome team to work with who I can come in every day and, um, and produce such quality equipment like this. This has all been done in-house. Uh, we haven't imported it, it's all our design. Uh, and of course, for those that are asking, ready to type away, is there going to be a kit? Of course there's going to be a kit, but first we need to complete the first one and then we'll be in a position to actually, uh, you know, uh, document it and start producing it. So, uh, yeah, absolutely, that, that's, where we, that's where we're going with this. As I've mentioned before, everything is bespoke uh, and that includes the adapter plate of the motor going onto the, onto the uh, gearbox as well. Actually, let's talk a bit more about that, that gearbox kit. Um, do you want to come in, Jack? Sorry. Hi, how are you going? Yep. Uh, so the adapter plate that we had made um, spe fits specifically to the uh, standard Toyota um, gearbox. There are additional mounts that had to be made because the engine was holding the back of the gearbox on. Uh, so we've had to make additional bracing. And in addition to that, um, what we've done is made a, a huge effort to retain the existing uh, Toyota uh, clutch and flywheel. Uh, so in this car, it's got a brand new heavy duty clutch and flywheel kit. So it's all the same from the adapter plate all the way back. Okay. 
so here we are at the interior again uh, for those people who have been following us. We have um, some of the trim back, the door skins. There's a few trim clips missing, so we just need to get those to mount them on the door. The customer is ordering some door hardware. Uh, the sound deadening is complete, and um, we can uh, once we put the floor lining in, we'll be able to start reconstructing the interior. So it's actually looking pretty good in here now, I've got to say. Um, pretty happy with it, uh, how it's come up. This isn't, may look leather, but it's, actually, it's, it's not, it's actually high quality vinyl. Uh, already had the um, heated seats, heated, heated pads installed, which is, and again, the, the door panels and the uh, sun visors as well. So it looks pretty, pretty good in here. Uh, we've only got a little bit of tidying up to do and the head unit to go in and all that kind of thing. Uh, and we'll be pretty much done in here in terms of the cosmetics. So not only, is the fabrication bespoke, but in terms of the component choice, that's bespoke pretty much to every vehicle. So here we've got uh, an X144 controller from a Hyper, for the Hyper 9 motor, which is already in this vehicle, and we've got a Thunderstruck DC to DC. Uh, so these are designed to work with each other, and the same with the chargers going in here and, and the BMS and all that kind of stuff. But for every vehicle, I mean, I'd love for every vehicle to be the same, so we can just buy, you know, a, a bucket load of each component and, and bang them in the vehicle but unfortunately um, because of the different requirements uh, range performance and all that kind of stuff the components may change from vehicle to vehicle now we have favorites um, but we do have to swap some of these out and the other thing is that uh, technology is changing all the time uh, and so for example, this is one control at the moment. There's another one that's just come on the market that we're looking at too, which seems to offer some, some really good features. There's also another couple of BMSs that we're working with at the moment too. Uh, so we try and inject, um, we, try and, we try and choose the right components for the vehicle uh, that are gonna be obviously reliable and maintainable and all those kind of good things uh, for the customer. But at the same time, we wanna push the envelope a little bit and see what is out there and see what we can uh, inject to add, add additional features. So for example, with the BMS that's going into this, this, this vehicle, it will give the customer range to empty, which is a pretty new thing for these kind of conversions. It's OEM style standard of uh, data that we'll, he'll see in the cab. And, but it's pretty important, right? You want to know how far you want to go. You want to know that it's you know, half half a tank of electricity. You want to know how how far you've got to got to empty. Um, so that's one of the one of the many features that's that's coming in at the moment into the market. In addition to stuff like vehicle to grid and that kind of stuff as well. So um, yeah, like I said, it's bespoke, and the way this market's going at the moment, the, the components are getting getting better and there's more choice, which is awesome for everyone. So, what's next? We've done the front battery box. Uh, the next step is take the tray off and um, start um, complete the fabrication of the, the rear battery boxes as well. Mm. So there's uh, the, the welding, the fabrication, the cutting, the powder coating, and then the fitment. And all the components in here as well. So look, the vehicle will probably be running before we have the other two battery boxes in. That's the plan, so we'll, we'll have a, some parallel tasks going on for all those PMI guys out there. Um, the uh, critical path, you mean? Yeah, it, the, yes, 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 yes. I think the battery boxes on the rear are critical path for everything, so. Uh, but yeah, so it's, it's, that means we can have two or three guys working on this at once without interrupting each other. Uh, and then um, we should be driving this Soon. Soon, actually. So if you want to be updated, or kept up to date with what we're doing, then obviously like and subscribe uh, and share, all that, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and again, ask away in the comments. We're eager to see your questions uh, and we'll do all our best to answer as completely and comprehensively as we can. See you next time. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of this, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And also check out our sponsors who make all this possible. Without them, we wouldn't be here doing this. Many thanks. See you soon. It is. You all right? The sharp bit.
Did, did he get that on? Uh, no. 